Amen. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. I'm going to look at verse 31 and verse 32. This is a very important verse of Scripture for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verse 31 and verse 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Praise God. Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Open up our understanding on this night. And may you inject your word in our spirit. And may we receive it. Amen. And allow it to bring change within us. May we not be the same as we were before we entered into this house. Father, let your word have full reign in our lives. We subject ourselves to thee and we hearken to your voice to receive thy words in the name of your only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now everybody must understand there is a war against your faith. I'm going to say that again. Because you need to understand there is a war against your faith. And people take this lightly. They take it lightly because they really don't understand. The Hebrew writer teaches us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh to God and believe that he is, he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Praise God. So we have to understand there is a war against your faith. Jesus says to one of his disciples, he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Now you got to understand the enemy will attack you. He will work on you gradually. He will grind you down without you ever even knowing what's happening. But you must understand that he has desire to have you. So he will strategize how to get you. And how does the enemy get us? When he successfully causes us to lose faith in God. And we live in a dumbed down generation because many think because they have a simple belief in God that they have faith in God. But that's not what the scripture says. Hallelujah. Because faith in God is not just something you confess but it's something that you act upon. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Faith is an action word. It's not something you just say you have, but it's something that you do. Praise God. I believe the apostle said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, he said, we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. And the enemy has it out for our faith. The devil knows that without faith, we can't please God. Without faith, we cannot receive our miracle. We cannot pray and get our prayers answered. We cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Without faith, we just can't please God. Are you listening to me? The devil knows that without faith, you will lose your soul for all of eternity. Because the apostle John in Revelation chapter 21 says, the fearful and the unbelieving shall have their part in the lake of fire. And the 
The devil wants to do whatever he can to cause us to lose faith in God. Are you listening to me? And the God that I'm addressing is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. For he is the true God. Hallelujah. He says in verse 31, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desire to have you. Did you see that? He's desired to have you. So that means there is going to be a war against your faith. Amen. Amen. That means it's time to buckle down. It's time to saddle up. It's time to put your war clothes on. Amen. 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 Because the enemy is coming hard against our faith. And if you don't think that's important, the prophecy was given to the Apostle Paul. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 he said the Spirit speaking expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. They will get heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Praise God. And this is why Jesus is addressing this because we need to see how important it is to have faith in God. Amen. Hallelujah. And having faith in God is not just something you say you have, but it's what you do after God has spoken. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to sift you. He desired to have you that he may sift you as we. Jesus says to him, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Now, Peter, who is Simon in this particular verse of scripture, he kind of had a hard time dealing with what Jesus said. He in no wise thought that he would uh, uh, lose faith in Jesus Christ, his Lord. Because he mentions in the next verse, he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. See that? Amen. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou hast thrice denied that thou knowest me. Praise God. Did you see that? Amen. Hallelujah. And as you keep reading this particular story that Jesus brings out, you will find out that Peter denied him three times. He denied him three times. And you know this happens every day. This happens every day. Because in Peter's stead, there were some people that approached Peter after Jesus had been arrested and taken to judgment hall. Hallelujah. And they approached him and said, weren't you with that Galilean? He said, no, I don't know the man. Praise God. Do you know we do that in almost everyday life? Titus chapter 1 and verse 16 says, many profess they know God, but by their works they deny him. In other words, I don't know the man. Hello somebody. Glory to God. Every time we sin, we testify that we don't know Jesus. Are you listening to me? Amen. And this is why I try to share with so many that saying you have faith in God is not When you have faith in God, it's something that you do. You obey God. You walk in his ways. Amen. Your life testifies of him. Amen. When you have faith in God, you don't deny him. You don't deny him. So we see in this text how Peter, he denied Jesus. And he denied him on three occasions. Praise God. 
Are you listening to me? Yeah. Amen. Well, let's just, let's just go to the text here. Now, after Jesus had been arrested and taken to judgment hall, let's skip a few verses of scripture. The text says here, let's start at verse 54. It said, then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. And he denied him saying, woman, I know him not. Hallelujah. Do you not know when you commit a sin, you say, I know him not. Every time you disobey his word, you're saying, I know him not. Come on, many profess they know him, but by their works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and to every good work they are reprobate. Come on, somebody. Praise God. We got too many people walking around. And immediately while he spake, the cock crew. Isn't that what Jesus said? 
prophecy fulfilled. If he said it, will it not come to pass? Hallelujah. Every word of God is pure. God knows all things because he told Peter in verse 34. He said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou hast three times denied that thou knowest me. And after he denied him for the third time in verse 59 and verse 60, verse 61 says, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Praise God. Can I ask you an honest question? When we have denied Jesus Christ, have you ever considered that when we did it, that the Lord turned and looked at us? Amen. After we have professed him, after we have talked about him, after we have testified that we know him, but yet we continuously deny him by our abominations, our disobedience. Praise God. The scripture said the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And you know what? He does the same to each and every one of us that profess to be his disciple. Come on, somebody. But I understand Peter's heart in this text. But you'll find out that many are not like this today. When Peter saw Jesus turn and looked at him, the scripture says in verse 62, Peter went out and wept bitterly. Why? Because he denied his Lord Jesus. You don't see that today. We can deny Jesus Christ and it doesn't even bother us. We don't have any conviction about it. Praise God. Because we become so stuck up on ourselves. It's all about us. It ain't about Jesus. It's about us. It's about me. It's about myself. It's about I. Hallelujah. It's not about Jesus. And that's why we can deny him. And yet we have no conviction. We're not even bothered by it. But yet the scripture says, Peter went out and he went bitterly. Because he has saddened the heart of his Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We got to understand there is a war against our faith. And this is exactly what Satan the devil longs to do, is to cause us to deny Jesus. Amen. 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 That's what he longs to do. And people are doing this on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm talking about them in the Christian church. Them who profess to be his followers. Praise God. And this is why it's time to repent. It's time to tighten up. It's time to get some conviction. You know? Because if we continue to deny him, you know what's going to happen? He's going to deny us. And we will not into the kingdom of God. Hello? Amen. He, amen. amen. Praise God. Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, let's go to the gospel of Matthew chapter 10. Amen. Let's read this. The gospel of Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 32. The text says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And confessing Christ is not you merely uttering it with your lips. Praise God. We confess Christ every day when we walk in his ways, when we obey his word, when we surrender to his every will. Hello? Whatever his will is, we submit to it. We humble our hearts and we obey his commandments. Are you listening to me? We die to the flesh. We lose our lives in this world. We come after Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 
When you obey God, you're confessing Christ. When you obey his word, when you keep his commandments, you are confessing Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. But verse 33 goes on to say, but whosoever shall deny me before men, see that? Is that not what Peter did? Did he not deny him before men? Well, guess what? We need to take our eyes off of Peter. We need to look up on ourselves. Because you'll find out how many of us today, we are denying Jesus almost every single day. And we don't have no uh, conviction about it. And the truth of it is, we become so spiritually blind, we don't even know we're doing it when we're doing it. That's just how deceived the devil has us. Come on, somebody. Whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. You will be denied entrance into the kingdom of God. This is why it's important to get this right. Come on. This is why we got to deny self. We got to take up that cross and lose our life in this world. Because if not, we will continue to deny Christ. You see how important that is? We will continue to deny him. This is why you got to die to that flesh. You got to lose your life in this world. Hallelujah. That's just how it is, praise God. That's just how it is. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. And even if we deny him, you know what the apostle said in Timothy? He said he cannot deny himself, for he is who he is. Come on. Glory to God. There is a war against our faith. And I don't think people understand that. The enemy want to keep us in as much doubt as he can. Because he understands that doubt is a sin. Hmm? Romans chapter 14 and verse 23 says, Whatsoever is not of faith is a sin. Hallelujah. We got a lot of doubt going on. A lot of doubt and Thomas is in the church. Hallelujah. They refuse to believe the validity of God's word. Hallelujah. They'll believe the devil at the drop of a hat, but struggle to believe the truth of God. Hello? Amen. Whatsoever is not of faith is a sin. See, the enemy knows that. He understands that. And that's why he is coming against our faith. Yes, he is. And this is why we got to put our war clothes on. We got to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold to eternal life. Amen? Are you listening to me? Isn't that what he said in 1 Timothy? Chapter 6. Praise God. 1 Timothy chapter 6. And verse 12. He said fight the good fight of faith. Now why do I need to fight the good fight of faith. If there's not a war coming against my faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Remember the enemy understands that without faith we cannot please God. We cannot be healed. We cannot be delivered. We cannot get our prayers answered. Hallelujah. God will not receive our worship. Hello. Come on, somebody. We cannot be saved without faith. The apostle said in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But if the enemy can fight us in the area of our mind and cause us to struggle to believe God, then that individual will never get saved. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil want to keep you preoccupied 
with worldly lust. What is he doing? He's attacking your faith. Satan has desired to have you. That he might sift you as wheat. So he uses many of his devices to cause you to become preoccupied. Hallelujah. He uses these devices to turn your heart away from God. Now you don't even have a passion for him. You don't even want to come to the house of prayer. You don't even want to get on your knees and pray. You don't even read the Bible hardly. Hello, somebody. Are you listening to me? The things of the Spirit have become a pastime to you. You don't have time for it. Other things are more important. But you have no understanding that Satan, the devil, is sifting you as weak. And your faith is failing. Your heart is being turned away. Your passion is gone. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? See, the apostle teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. He said, be not ignorant of Satan's devices. Amen. Be not ignorant of Satan's devices. He teaches us that. Praise God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, rather, verse 11. Amen. And we got to be mindful of this warfare that we are in. And whether you want to be in it or not, you've already been deployed. You are in the warfare, but if you're going to come out on the winning side, you're going to have to get a hold of Jesus and take heed to his word and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold to eternal life. Come on. Are you listening to me? Amen. Jude teaches us in verse 3. He said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. See that? Who delivered this faith to the saints in the New Testament church? It was the apostles. That's why it says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 how the New Testament church continues steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That is the faith that we are to contend for. Amen. That is the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what they preached. They preached Jesus and him crucified. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever the Bible teaches, that's what we are to contend for. Amen. Amen. Whatever the Bible teach, we got to contend for it. Amen. Amen. We got to take, take a hold to it. We got to bind it around our neck. Amen. And we got to bind it around our finger. And the scripture says in Proverbs, forget it not. Now, the devil going to come and try to confuse you. Praise God. But that's when you need to put the word on them. Come on. Hallelujah. Isn't that what Jesus did in the wilderness of temptation? 
against our faith. And Satan has come to sift us as wheat. But Jesus said, I pray that your faith fail not. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And in this end time hour, many people are throwing the towel in. They are throwing the towel in. They are walking away from God. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Satan, the devil, has seduced them. Hallelujah. Yeah. He has seduced them. How did he seduce them? He induced them with his lies. And when they received his lies, they became seduced. He induced them with his lies. And when they received his lies, they were seduced. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. Are you hearing me? This is why it's important that as saints of God, we must sit at the table of God and we must eat his word and drink of his spirit. We need to get up from the devil's table and stop eating at his table and drinking his wine. Come on, somebody. The devil poisoning us. Poison us on the television. Poison us on social media. Poison us in video games. Will he find faith? 
upon the earth. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, says these words. When he was given the parable, of the unjust judge that did not fear God, neither regarded man. you find it in verse 1 through verse 5. And Jesus responds, because in this parable, he's dealing with a widow woman who was wanting to be avenged of her adversary. Praise God. Praise God. And because this widow woman continued to trouble this unjust judge, he finally avenged her. You know why? She continued to trouble him because she believed God. She wasn't putting her faith in the unjust judge. She believed God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when she believed God, that means she would have to get up and get in motion. And as she went to the unjust judge, she was trusting God to touch his heart that he might avenge her of her adversary. Come on. Praise God. Because this parable is dealing with one who operates in faith. Then Jesus said in verse 6, hear what the unjust judge said. Verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Come on. Amen. You're going to find out a lot of people will have lost they would have thrown in the towel. They would have given up. They would have turned to this beast system. And they would become partakers of this satanic mark. Where without it you cannot buy or sell. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. When Jesus returns, there will be a faithful few. You don't believe that? Well, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17 says, uh, praise God that when Jesus returns, he said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then they that are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall meet him in the air. Amen? Amen. The ones that are alive and remain on the earth are them that are holding on to faith. These are born standing on 
the rock of their salvation. And they refuse to compromise just to save their life in this world. Come on. But God sustains them during this end time hour. And they are spared from facing death. That's why there's going to be some that are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Praise God. And they shall be resurrected after the dead in Christ and they all shall, amen, receive their glorified bodies and they shall be with Jesus forever. The scripture teaches. This is a war against our faith. Come on. This is why you can't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Amen. The, uh, the, the lies of the enemy turn you away from the faith. Amen. Huh? Amen. Yes, they do, praise God. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, the time will come that many will not endure sound doctrine. He said that. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. He said, the time will come they will not endure sound doctrine. That's the truth of God. He said, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. When your ears have been turned from the truth, that means you have departed from the faith. Amen. Amen. You are one who no longer believes God. Amen. So when you believe a lie, you believe the devil. But when you believe the truth, you believe God. Amen. That's why people got to be very careful. This is why you can't be in everybody's face. <laughs> Praise God. You can't be listening to any Tom, Dick, and Harry preacher. <laughs> Praise God. I don't care how good they sound. I, Your doctrine is not sound. You are tickling simple and a sounding brass. Praise God. Are you listening to me? He said they will turn away their ears from the truth. That means you will depart from the faith. Why? Because you're giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Where is that seducing spirit coming from? Through that preacher. That so-called preacher. Who's, in, who's falsely indoctrinating you. Praise God. That seducing spirit that is on him will turn your ears from the truth and they shall be turned to fables. Praise God. You have given heed to seducing spirits and now you're believing in doctrines of devils. Come on. You're no longer believing in the apostles doctrine, which is the doctrine of Christ that was given to him by his father. Praise God. Are you listening to me? Amen. Does this make sense? Amen. There's a war against our faith. And how many know we got to fight the good fight of faith? Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we do. We got to earnestly contend for the faith. For Satan has desired to sift us as weak. But Jesus said, I pray that your faith fail not. Hallelujah. That's what he said. I pray that your faith fail not. Amen. Hallelujah. We need the faith of God. Amen. We need the faith of God. And when God blesses us to become partakers of his faith, which is imparted in our hearts by receiving the love of the truth, then we got to contend if we want to keep it. We got to fight if we're going to continue to uphold it. Praise God, because the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and to destroy. How does he do that? By luring us away from the truth and causing us to uh, venture back into his bosom. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And this is happening to a lot of people in this last day. It's happening to a lot of people. So you have to go home with this. You have to go to work with this. 
You have to come to the house of God with this. Amen. Wherever you are, you got to hold on to faith. Amen. You got to walk by faith. You can't go against the word because if you do, you're not walking by faith. Praise God. You are in the flesh. You're telling Jesus, I don't know you. Amen. Are you listening to me? You got to stand on the word. You got to walk in his ways. You got to do that which is right in the sight of God. Because everything we do as uh, children of the Most High, we must confess Christ. And the only way we're going to do that is to obey his word. Keep his commandments. We must do the Father's will. Praise God. We can't make this stuff up as we go. We got to take heed according to thy word. Isn't that what it says? In Psalms chapter 119. And I believe verse number 9. Praise God. Psalms chapter 119. Beginning at verse 9 it says. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? This is how you're going to cleanse your way. This is how you're going to make it with God. This is how you're going to overcome the flesh. This is how you're going to overcome the devil. This is how you're going to overcome this wicked world. You must take heed there to according to thy word. Praise God. And then he goes on to say in verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. That means you got to pray to. You got to pray to. You got to pray. Hallelujah. He said, with my whole Jeremiah chapter 7 and verse 8 says, Behold, you trust 
in lying words. And did you not know that lying words cannot profit? It does not profit your life. It may make you feel good in the flesh. You might just be deceived and thinking that you are getting somewhere. But when you open up your blinded eyes and see things for what they really are, you'll find yourself going back into perdition. Because you cannot trust in lying words and end up in heaven with Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you believe a lie, you believe the devil. You are trusting in lying words. That's why he said the time will come. They will not endure sound doctrine. They will heed to themselves teachers because they got itching ears. And yet these same teachers that are not of God. Hallelujah. They will turn your ears from the truth unto fables. Now you believe in a lie. You're trusting in lying words that cannot profit. That can't save you. That can't deliver you. That can't heal you. Come on somebody. You're trusting in lying words that will cause you to deny Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Does this make sense? There's a war that has come against our faith. And we must fight Jesus. the good fight of faith. And lay hold to eternal life. Amen. See, many are giving up today. They are giving up. Satan, the devil, is wearing them out. Many are saying, what's the use? Many have already spoken a curse over their life. Whereby they believe that they're not going to make it. I didn't do too much. I didn't mess up so, so many times in my life. God is not going to forgive me. What's the use? I might as well go on back out in the world. And just live in sin and die because I'm not going to make it. Hallelujah. Well, you're talking like that. you sure not right. going to make it. Right. Amen. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. You better come up out of that. Amen. You better get the faith of God. I begin to speak life. I'm coming out of my situation. I'm turning from my sin. I'm getting out of this rut that I'm in. I'm going to start putting my trust in God. And I'm going to stand on his word. Are you listening to me? I don't care what the devil say. I don't care what man say. I'm going to believe what thus saith the Lord. Come on somebody. Because that's what we must have. In this end time hour, we must have the faith of God. Amen. We must have the love of God. Amen. 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 In 1 Corinthians 13, he talks about faith, hope, and charity, which is agape, the love of God. He said, but the greatest of these is love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So you got to have the faith of God. You got to have the love of God. Amen? Amen? Because without faith, again he says in Revelation 21, the fearful and unbelieving shall have their part in the lake of fire. You're not going to make it. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. That's why Jesus could not heal many when he went to his hometown. The scriptures say he marveled at their unbelief. But he can only, he only heal but a few sick folk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Apostle Paul continued with some people even in his day when he was in Thessalonica. He said, Lord, deliver me from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. Hallelujah. So a lot of people that surround you, you'll find out a lot of them are full of unbelief. And you got to get off from around them. Amen. You don't believe that? 
Well, when Jesus went to Jairus' house, see, his daughter had died. But Jesus said to Jairus, she is but asleep. Right. But she had actually died. You know what Jesus did? He put all the doubters out. <laughs> Read the text. He put all the doubters out. So you can't be around a bunch of doubting people. A bunch of folk that always speak in debt, yeah. negative. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You got to get up from around people like that. Because if you ain't careful, praise God, that dark cloud will come and hang over your head. Come on. You got to get around some people of like precious faith. You don't believe that, do you? Amen. Amen. He said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, praise God. Praise God. You got to get off from around all them doubters. Even Jesus put them all out. Yeah. He put all them doubters out. Hey, Amen. Praise God. I don't know why we don't follow Jesus. We got to follow Jesus. We got to do what he did. Yeah. Hey, Amen. That's why we're not successful. That's why we're not successful because we don't really follow the word of God. We just do what we want to do. And then we uh, forge his name on the document. Amen? Amen. We co-sign his name illegally. And say, you know, Jesus this and Jesus that. Jesus ain't got nothing to do with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why we don't ever see the hand of God move upon our life. Praise God. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 18. Amen. Let's look here. Let's start here, verse number. Let's start at verse 18. He said, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he says in verse 19, Again I say unto you, That if two of you shall agree on earth, As touching anything that they shall ask, It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. See that? Amen. Who are those two? That's touching and agreeing. These are the people of God Amen. that have faith. Amen. Faith touches faith. Amen. I can't agree with somebody who don't believe. I need somebody I can touch and agree with that believe the word like I do. Come on. Are you listening to me? He said, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. And the thing that you ask must be according to his will. You can never pray or ask for anything outside of his will. Praise God. We got scripture to prove that. But he said that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. See that? These are two or three who have faith. Two or three that are true worshipers. Two or three that are standing for holiness. Come on, somebody. That's what you need. You can't have a bunch of doubters around you. Amen. That's why it's important that we share our faith. That we uh, share the gospel because there are doubters out there that need to hear the truth and come to faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Other than that, you're just dealing with a bunch of doubters. Amen. And that's why it's important to share your faith. It's important to let your light so shine that others may see that they too may want to glorify the Father which is in heaven. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus put all the doubters out. He put them all out. Then when he went to his hometown, and he marveled at their unbelief. The Bible said he could only heal but a few sick folk. Right. But many people in his hometown did not get healed because they were full of unbelief. Amen. See that? The devil don't want you to believe. Amen. That's why you'll never get healed. You'll never get delivered. You'll never receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Your praise, your sacrificial offering will never be accepted by God. Because we are of old ye of little faith. 
In Mark chapter 9, verse 19, Jesus called them a faithless generation. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20, speaking concerning the children of Israel during that time, he said they were children of no faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you listening to me? But how many know we got to trust him at all times? Psalm 62 and verse 8, the scripture says, trust him at all times and pour out your heart before him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to get back to believing God. Because that's what faith is. Faith is believing God. When you believe God, you don't just sit on your rump roast. You get up and move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the scripture says, when God spake to Abraham to leave the earth of the Chaldee, to get away from his father's house and his kindred, the scripture says Abraham believed God. He got up and he left. He didn't just stay there. He got up and went. See, that's faith. Faith is always in motion. It's doing the will of God. Amen. It's not doing what you want to do. It's doing the will of God. Faith is believing God. It's trusting in him at all times. See? When you trust God, you ain't just saying, I'm trusting God. Okay, what did God say for you to trust him? Right. See? That's what you got to get to. For you to say, I'm trusting God, what did God say? God has to say something for me to trust him. So what did he say? Come on, somebody. I'm trying to make this plain for you. Because God spoke to Abraham, and Abraham believed God. God gave him a word, and Abraham believed the word. And the truth, and the truth of the matter is, when he believed the word, he got up and did what he said. Jesus spoke a word to Peter and said, Come and walk on the water. Peter just didn't stay on the boat. Peter stepped outside the boat and began to walk to Jesus on water. And what do we do today? When God speaks to us, what do we do? Just sit there. When we leave the house of God, we forgot what he said. And that's why we are where we are. That's why many today are going back into perdition. According to Hebrews chapter 38 verse 39. Huh? Yes, sir. Because the truth is, many are not believing God. Huh? Amen. Faith is believing God. It's trusting in Him at all times. Faith is taking God at His word. Amen. Huh? Amen. Faith is when one becomes a doer of the word. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what faith is. Amen. I told you, faith doesn't stand, it walks. We walk by faith. We're living by the word. Amen. Huh? We're obeying God. We always in motion doing what God said. Amen. Despite the doubters on the right, despite the mockers on the left, we set our heart up on him. And we do what he said. Amen. We don't become fearful. We don't yield to the voices of the, the stranger. Amen. And then we begin to fall in unbelief. And we begin to sink in the water like Peter did. Scripture says he became afraid. And he began to sink. Praise God. And you know that's what happens to us? When we stop believing God, you know what happened? You begin to sink. You begin to sink. Hallelujah. You begin to sink. You ain't walking with God because you fell into unbelief. You begin to sink. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And notice when Peter was walking on the water by faith. The scripture said it was a storm. And he became fearful. Fear is the opposite of faith. See, the enemy going to attack you. <laughs> Cause you to become fearful. Hmm? See, when you become fearful, you stop believing God. 
Because you're too busy looking at your circumstance, your situation, what I'm going through. You didn't make your situation, your circumstance, and what you're going through bigger than God. And now you stop believing God and you start putting all your focus on what you're going through. Your situation, your circumstance, your money situation. Come on, somebody. And now you're sinking. You're sinking. You're sinking. Come on. Praise God. And if we're going to come back above water, we got to do what Peter did. He began to humble himself. He began to look at Jesus and say, Lord, save me. And Jesus stretched forth his hand and shut him. Praise God. Come on. Does this make sense? There's a war against our faith. And that's why it's important that we Get in the house of God and get this word in us. But it ain't enough. You got to go home. Yeah. You got to go back to work. Yeah. You're going to be by yourself sometime. Yeah. You're going to be with your spouse. You're going to be with your children. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Now what are you going to do with what you heard? See, faith comes out period. Now what are you going to do with what you heard? Cast behind your back. Forget all about it. Just cast it to the ground and act like I've never heard it. See? Amen. The scripture says, Satan has desired to sit you as meat. But Jesus said, I pray that your faith fail not. It's all about it. It's all about your faith. Amen. Your faith. Amen. I pray that your faith fail not. Amen. God's word is where our faith comes from. That's why the word of God is everything. Amen. It's everything. That's where our faith comes from. Amen. Hallelujah. Where would we be without the word of God? Hallelujah. None of us would exist without the word. The Bible says in Hebrews that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Come on. And everything is upheld by the word of his power. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's how God made everything, by his word. Amen. He spoke it into existence. Amen. Most people said God made all things by Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the word. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture said he was before all things. And by him, all things consist. See, he's the word. Huh? He is the word of God. And the word was God. Come on, somebody. Come on and stand to your feet and give God a sacrifice of praise.